Game Freak is notorious for relying heavily on conventions and recycling the same ideas over and over, all the while developing and releasing relatively poor quality and generally underwhelming installments in everyone's favorite monster catching series. I spent a fair amount of time on this channel documenting and criticizing the lack of quality seen throughout the Game Freak Pokemon games, especially in recent years, in the hopes that one day the series would receive a modicum of care and respect I know it deserves. I'm pleased to admit that throughout the recent trailer of Legends Arceus, there is compelling evidence that that time has finally come. Legends is the first 3D Pokemon title where Game Freak can be seen expanding upon previous titles in meaningful and substantial ways. This is especially true for the Pokemon who were in dire need of adjustments, seeing as how they've been largely stagnant since their inception in X and Y all the way back in 2013. Let's take a look and see exactly what I'm talking about. Three words, high quality animations. But for real this time. For Sword and Shield, Game Freak, more specifically Masuda, asserted on several different occasions during interviews that the move to the Switch granted them the ability to make Pokemon more expressive and lively through the use of high quality animations. This demanded more resources and therefore was one of the reasons given for the abandonment of the national decks, resulting in the inability to catch them all in the game. Game Freak ultimately failed to deliver. A large number of animations ended up being the exact opposite of high quality and thus the meme high quality animations was born. Things are different this time around though. There are several examples of Pokemon using entirely new animations and their implementation is utilized superbly. From Starly using a new walking animation to flee from pursuing trainers, to Buzel's never before seen sleeping position, to Luxray's incredibly powerful front flipping slash during wild charge, the Pokemon feel reinvigorated to degrees not seen in a very, very very long time, at least for Game Freak Pokemon titles. Speaking of Luxray's Wild Charge, Pokemon finally make physical contact during battle. This is incredibly exciting as it elevates immersion and gets the player even more invested in battles. I pointed out before how it was disappointing that a Chinese knockoff could feature battles with physical contact while it was still nowhere to be found in Game Freak games. Game Freak, after all this time, has finally met the standards established by Pokemon Battle Revolution, and I couldn't be happier. Fantastic addition. Damage animations seem to be far more dynamic compared to past Pokemon titles. Typically, Pokemon would take a hit, followed by a short flinch animation. This made attacks feel flat, as if though the opposing Pokemon was just shrugging off whatever you threw at it. In Legends, when a Pokemon takes a hit during battle, not only do they flinch, but they're also pushed back in the process, and then proceed to run back up to their initial position, unlike in Sword and Shield for some Pokemon where they would awkwardly slide back into place. This has the effect of making attacks feel far more impactful, powerful, and satisfying when it lands. Pokemon can turn now. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. They turn. The fact that this is noteworthy and low-key kinda hype perfectly illustrates how truly far we've fallen. So deprived and hungry for quality that any bone thrown, no matter how small, is lapped up on sight. For those who may be confused, we're used to dealing with things like this. Definitely a welcomed attention to detail that lends itself to bringing the Pokemon more to life by making them more convincing as living, breathing entities as opposed to lines of code. A neat little detail I missed at first is that Game Freak implemented head tracking into battles. This was originally exclusive to the Ami system or Dynamax Pokemon, so it's really nice to see it added to regular battles to make them that much more believable and enjoyable. Instead of having your Pokemon stare blankly into the void, it now feels like they're actively tracking and engaging with the threat that stands before them. It was always criminal having such great assets locked behind an optional side feature. These tiny, seemingly insignificant details may seem unimportant, but they contribute a great deal to player immersion, enhancing the player's experience as a result. Pokemon actions in the overworld finally extend beyond aimless wandering. The aforementioned fleeing Starly and sleeping Buzel come to mind. Not only are Pokemon seen doing things, but it was implemented in a way that adds mechanical depth to a Pokemon staple, catching. Now you can't mindlessly walk up to any Pokemon in order to catch them. Some, like Starly, are timid and require a more delicate approach. 
like sneaking up on them. This is the type of innovation that Pokemon has been desperately overdue for an extremely long time now, and it's incredibly refreshing seeing a pillar of the series fleshed out in a fun and creative way. As stated in my video that went over the first trailer, I was deeply concerned that the overworld Pokemon would suffer the same fates as seen in Let's Go and Sword and Shield, since they could all be seen standing around like lifeless mannequins. I'm glad I can put that concern to rest. Some shots have come out where Pokemon can be seen from quite a ways away. Sword and Shield's large, open areas suffered a great deal from the insufferable pop-in due to the short draw distance of the Pokemon. It's not yet clear if they've come up with a clever way to fully remedy this, but at least being able to render Pokemon outside of the immediate vicinity of the player will certainly help in populating the world and making it feel less barren and empty. One of the most disappointing aspects of Sword and Shield was the lack of proper scaling for the Pokemon. It was one of the main advantages 3D console Pokemon titles enjoyed over their 2D handheld counterparts, displaying the Pokemon in all their glory. Character traits are important because they're what bring the character to life. Mario without his mustache just isn't the same character anymore. Pokemon scale works in a similar manner. The scale of the Pokemon is an important character trait that, when properly portrayed, leaves an unforgettable impression. There's nothing quite like throwing a Pokeball and having a massive blue whale materialize in front of you. This magic is lost in Sword and Shield, for the most part. The scaling in Sword and Shield was not only off-model at times, but it was inconsistent. Going out to catch a giant whale or off in the distance, to then take it out of its Pokeball moments later and have it appear as if though it was hit by a shrink ray is as much jarring as it is distracting. It appears that this was addressed in Legends, and Game Freak took it one step further than that at the same time. The Pokemon have variable scaling for the same species, meaning you can have two of the same Pokemon with differing sizes. A mechanic introduced in Let's Go, but the model failed to reflect the actual size of the Pokemon in that game. This is actually a really cool piece of innovation as it's another avenue of increased expression, and helps to distinguish Pokemon from one another, similar to using clothing or any other form of customization. Members of the same species do typically come in different shapes and sizes, so it makes sense that Pokemon would as well, instead of each Pokemon being a carbon copy of one another. Game Freak spent years slowly iterating on the concept of rideable Pokemon, only to then abandon the concept entirely with Sword and Shield, despite rideable Pokemon being better in every way. Game Freak has come around to their senses and not only reintroduced rideable Pokemon, but they may have perfected it. The ugly clown suit the player was forced to wear in Sun and Moon is no more, which I'm ecstatic for. It's unclear yet if the Pokemon you ride are rented or if they're your very own, but either way, it's a huge step up from the bike. Only time will tell. There's a number of Pokemon players who would really love a more action-oriented battle system for Pokemon, where you control the Pokemon kind of like in Pokémon. Game Freak even appealed to these players by introducing a clever compromise. Crafting an action RPG hybrid, the player character can now be attacked and harmed by wild Pokemon. As the player character, you need to literally dodge incoming attacks from rabid, highly aggressive Pokemon as you attempt to capture them. This is a far cry from anything Pokemon related Game Freak has produced ever, and is the exact type of innovation necessary to breathe much needed life back into the stagnating franchise. This transforms the typically mundane and uneventful Pokemon encounter into one of genuine danger, threat, adventure, and strategy. From your average anti-critical, anti-quality, pro-complacent fanboy, they'll tell you that Game Freak would have made these changes anyways. And maybe they're right. There's no way to know for sure unless Game Freak themselves came out and said so, but like, Game Freak didn't need to add all new, unique, distinct turning animations, even though it's greatly appreciated. It just so happens that one of the most egregious examples of high quality animations was the turning animation, or lack thereof, for the box art legend during the epilogue of Sword and Shield, the poster child of the meme. An oddly specific change, wouldn't you say? Just a crazy coincidence, I'm sure. To pretend that Game Freak doesn't take any criticism into account whatsoever is, in my humble opinion, incredibly naive. Despite what consumers may say, criticism is an invaluable tool that encourages and promotes change and innovation for the better. This is proven time and time again and will continue to hold true so long as passion and love for media persists. You've nothing to lose and everything to gain by speaking your mind while you complain. Simply wanting the best for things you care for and expressing that in a critical manner is always worth it. Well, that's all for me for this one. How do you guys feel about these changes? I read every single comment so be sure to leave me your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching and until next time.